ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चैव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय धीर अष्टप्राय शुभद्रेश भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती निष्ठी ओम अज्ञानतिरांद से ज्ञानाजन शलाक चक्षुन्मिल मेन तस्में श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा बुधले श्रीमदे भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमस्ते नमस्ते सारस्वतीदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा स्वामी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे श्रीमद्भागवतम कैंटो फोर चैप्टर एट वर्स फोर्टी फाइव प्रसादाभिमुख शश्वत प्रसन्ना वदने क्षण सुनासम शुभ्रुव तारूकपोल सुरसुंदर द फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड इज डिस्क्राइब हियर इन द ब्यूटीफुल फॉर्म ऑफ विष्णु इज डिस्क्राइब The Lord's face is perpetually very beautiful, <laughs> perpetually very beautiful, and pleasing in attitude. <clears throat> Meaning, anybody who looks at the Lord becomes pleased. Meaning, experiences happiness. To the devotees who see Him, He appears never to be displeased. and is always prepared to award benedictions to them his eyes is nicely decorated eyebrows his raised nose and his broad forehead are all very beautiful is more beautiful than all the demigods so it's nice to actually remember the <coughs> the details in the lord's form Mm. so if we really remember the lord's form then we will stop paying too much attention to our form mm. if we remember the lord's face then we will start giving less importance to our face so if we look at the lord's beauty then we will start giving less attention to our beauty like that mm. so the more we <clears throat> can focus meditate remember the descriptions and so we have to remember these descriptions now or in other in another way we can create a, our own image of the lord factoring in these descriptions and so lord's face so now we are creating an image of the lord's face in our mind and lord's face is perpetually very beautiful always very beautiful so whatever is our sense of understanding of beauty then we can understand it's very beautiful in our uh, estimation and it's always pleasing pleasing he is always there's a smile on his face he never seems displeased even if you have done something wrong <clears throat> he is our well wishing father they never displeased and is always prepared to award benedictions and his eyes uh, so now description of the features of his face his eyes uh, which is described elsewhere as lotus eyed vishnu is lotus eyed like the sh- shaped like petal large eyes and tapering at the ends his nicely decorated eyebrows his raised nose and his broad forehead are all very beautiful <coughs> is more beautiful than all the demigods this verse clearly explains how one has to meditate on the form of the lord impersonal meditation is bogus invention of modern days in none of the vedic literatures is impersonal meditation recommended in bhagavad gita when meditation is recommended the word matparaha which means pertaining to me is used 
any Vishnu form pertains to Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna is the original Vishnu form. Sometimes someone tries to meditate upon the impersonal Brahman, which is described in Bhagavad Gita as Abhyakta, meaning unmanifested or impersonal. <clears throat> but it is remarked by the Lord Himself that those who are attached to this impersonal feature of the Lord suffer a very troublesome task because no one can concentrate on the impersonal feature. What is impersonal feature? Just light, energy, very troublesome. Why troublesome? Because it has to be something which is going to capture our minds. It has to attract us. We won't get attracted by some bright light. Uh, but the beautiful form of the Lord, the form of the Lord is so beautiful that it can actually attract us. It can attract our fickle mind which is too much attached to material things. Mm. Mm. It's so powerful, the Lord's form, that it can actually attract us. <clears throat> and hence, one has to concentrate on the form of the Lord, which is described here in connection with Dhruva Maharaj's meditation. As will be apparent from later descriptions, Dhruva Maharaj perfected this kind of meditation and his yoga was successful. Of course, this is the perfection. Manmana Bhava Madhbhakta. Always thinking about the Lord. Uh, is form, pastimes, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, but all that is not going to happen very easily or just like that. Sevan mukehi jivadav svayam meva spuratyada. Sevan mukehi jivadav, starting with the tongue. And we have to start serving Krishna. And then svayam meva spuratyada. Then he himself will reveal uh, then we, our mind can capture the uh, beauty of the Lord. And eventually we will actually see the form of the Lord uh, with our own eyes. Tarunam Ramani Yangam Arunostekshanadharam Pranatashrayanam Drimnam Drimnam Sharanyam Karunarnavam <clears throat> Nardamani continued. The Lord's form is always youthful. Every limb and every part of his body is properly formed. Free from defect. It's like perfect. A perfectly formed body. Perfect beauty. His eyes and lips are pinkish. Not reddish. Pinkish. Like the rising sun. He is always prepared to give shelter to the surrendered soul. And anyone so fortunate as to look upon him feels all satisfaction. And if we are dissatisfied, if our mind is um, agitated about something, all we have to do is simply look at the beautiful face of Krishna. The Lord is always worthy to be the master of the surrendered soul for he is the ocean of mercy. So these are not exaggerations. These statements are not exaggerations. He is the ocean of mercy means he is the ocean of mercy. Everyone has to surrender to someone superior. That is always the nature of our living condition. At the present moment, we are trying to surrender to someone, either society, nation, family, state, government, and the surrendering process already exists, but it is never perfect because the person or institution unto whom we surrender is imperfect. And our surrender having so many ulterior motives is also imperfect. Yeah, so many people, they just namesake surrender to somebody or they're not even surrendered they're just cheating in the you know by uh, praising somebody uh, in, in in political terms it's called bootlicking uh, which is just try to please that person ready to do anything even to lick his boot and this is modern this is the 
modern day people right to get their ultimate ulterior motives achieved they're ready to do anything and the same mood is there when we come to krishna also saying that okay let me get some personal benefit so that surrender to krishna with ulterior motives is not perfect it's not perfect that is why rupa goswami says anya bilashita shunyam nan karma danavrutam anukulyena krishna anushitam anya bilashita shunyam ah oh, there should be no other motive except pleasing krishna as such in the material world no one is worthy to accept anyone's surrender because nobody is capable enough to accept somebody else's surrender nor does anyone fully surrender to anyone else unless obliged to do so yeah unless obliged to do so or they have some ulterior motives or some somebody is forcing them to surrender otherwise nobody wants to surrender nobody is worthy of receiving surrender also accepting anyone surrender but here the surrendering process is voluntary and the lord is worthy to accept the surrender so we have to voluntarily surrender to the lord we cannot oh be forced i cannot force somebody to surrender to krishna i'm <laughs> broke Prabhupada is saying the surrender by the living entity occurs automatically as soon as he sees the beautiful youthful nature of the Lord. Huh? Just imagine how powerful the form of the Lord is. When somebody looks at the beautiful form of the Lord, one automatically surrenders. Hmm. Unimaginable. Right? Just by looking at the form of the Lord, jiva is moved in a direction so as to surrender which otherwise through logic through explanation through mm, philosophy people don't surrender but ropa is saying just by looking at the beautiful youthful nature of the lord people will surrender hmm. the description by narada muni is not imaginary the form of the lord is understood by the parampara system mayavadi philosophers say that we have to imagine the form of the lord but here narada muni does not say that rather he gives the description of the lord from authoritative sources he himself is an authority and he is able to go to vaikuntha and see the lord personally therefore his description of the bodily feature of the lord is not an imagination sometimes we give instructions to our students about the bodily features of the lord and they paint him their paintings are not imaginary the description is given through disciplic succession just like that given by narada muni who sees the lord and describes his bodily features therefore such description should be accepted and if they are painted that is not imaginative painting so every painting authorized by shila propa in iskon uh, is a real glimpse of the spiritual world shri propa is saying the description is given through disciplic succession just like just like is not saying that as is given by narada muni hmm. so propada is also seen the lord he is given the giving, giving the description of the lord hmm. and yeah one example is that given by narada muni and therefore such description should be accepted so again i'm just repeating these things these details and these details of the krish of lord's form uh, these have to be remembered and we should try to remember these at least some things which captured our attention ಪೀವತ್ಸಾಂಕ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಪುರುಷ ವನಮಾಲಿನ ಶಂಕಚಕ್ರ ಪದ್ಮೈರಭಿಭ್ಯಕ್ತುರ್ಭುಜ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್
uh, or the sitting place of the goddess of fortune. And his bodily hue is deep bluish. Ghanashyamam. The Lord is a person. Purusham. Uh, Vanamalinam. He wears a garland of flowers. Vanamali. And is eternally manifest with Chanka Chakra Gada Padma. So, which is Shanka Chakra Gada Padma, beginning from the lower left hand. Lower left hand, lower. Uh, no, lower left hand, then upper left hand, is it? What is okay? Every form of Vishnu has different. The Shanka Chakra Gada Padma are held in different positions. <clears throat> Here in this verse, the word Purusham is very significant. The Lord is never female, He is always male, Purusha. Therefore, the impersonalist who imagines the Lord's form as that of a woman is mistaken. Hmm. The Lord appears in female form if necessary, but His perpetual form is Purusha because He is originally male. Basically, Shaktas were worshippers of Shakti. They say she is supreme. So, Prabhupada is saying, no, she is not supreme. And the feminine feature of the Lord is displayed by the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, Radharani, Sita, etc. All these goddesses of fortune are servitors of the Lord. They are not the supreme, as falsely, falsely imagined by the impersonalist. Lord Krishna in his Narayana feature is always four-handed. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, when Arjuna wanted to see his universal form, he showed his feature of four-handed Narayana. Some devotees are of the opinion that Krishna is an incarnation of Narayana. But the Bhagavata school says that Narayana is a manifestation of Krishna. Kiritinam kundalinam keyura valayanvitam kaustu bhabharana grivam pita kaushaya vasasam uh, the entire body of the Supreme Person of God at Vasudeva is decorated. Kiritinam. Mm. He wears a valuable jeweled helmet. Mm. Then Kundalinam. Pearl earrings. Where is that? No, oh, it's not there here. Okay. Uh, Kayura, jeweled necklace. Mm. Valaya Anvitam with jeweled bracelets. Uh, so he wears a valuable jewel helmet. Uh, then there are pearl earrings. Then there are necklaces. There are bracelets. Uh, Kaustuba Abharana Grivam. His neck is adorned with Kaustuba Javel. Uh, and Pita Kaushaya Vasam. He is dressed in yellow silk garments. Mm. Mm. So if somebody is attracted by jewelry, we can get attracted by seeing the jewelry of the Lord. Kanchikalapa Paryastam Lasat Kanchana Nupuram Darshaya Darshaniya Darshaniyatamam Chantam Manonayana Vardhanam The Lord is decorated with small golden bells around his waist. His lotus feet are decorated with golden ankle bells. All his bodily features are very attractive and pleasing to the eyes. He is always peaceful, calm and quiet and very pleasing to the eyes and the mind. Hmm. Bodily features are also attractive and pleasing. He is also peaceful, calm and quiet and very pleasing. Overall, personality of the Lord. Padhyam Nakamani Shrenya Vilasadhyam Samarchatam Tutpadma Karnika Dishnyam Akramyat Manya Vastitam Real yogis meditate upon the transcendental form of the Lord as he stands on the wall of the lotus of their hearts. The jewel like, jewel -like nails of his lotus feet glittering. Again, these descriptions, initially when I used to read them, I used to get bored. Uh, saying, what, what is the use of this? I am not getting any knowledge. 
Of course, there's knowledge. There's knowledge about the beautiful form of the Lord. And each of these details, again, I'm repeating, each of these details need to be remembered as much as possible. So that we can actually, this is Smaranam, Mananam, thinking about the Lord requires us to know of a form on which to meditate. Now, what's supposed to happen is that we are supposed to be chanting Hare Krishna, hearing the names. Uh, and these descriptions naturally have to come in our mind, naturally. Meaning, suddenly when you say Hare Krishna, if we have made a mental picture of Krishna from the description of Shastra, then he or by seeing the beautiful form of Krishna in various temples in Iskon. Now, for example, it could be Mayapur, it could be Vrindavan. And those forms have to be etched in our minds. And as soon as we see a Krishna, suddenly that beautiful form can come in front of our eyes. But this has to be natural. This has to be natural. We are not forcing ourselves to think about the form of the Lord. Okay, initially we, uh, many devotees chant with the form of the Lord in front of them, maybe they're sitting in front of the deities or they have a picture of the Lord, their favorite deities. And whenever mind is uh, troubling, uh, they try to look at the form of the Lord uh, because then the mind agitation of the mind will be reduced and the mind can again focus on the Shavanam. But eventually, when this disturbance stops and then we simply say Krishna, then the beautiful, smiling, youthful, pleasing uh, form with you know eyes which are like lotus petals, broad forehead, raised nose, thick eyebrows, curly hair, mm, mm, teeth like bimba fruits, mm. Uh, what else? Uh, Karna Kundala, the shark shaped earrings. Uh, so, all this should automatically come in the mind of the devotee. Mm. And of course, if somebody is focused on Krishna, then also there will be low, there will be uh, flute in his right hand, and there is a stick or a buffalo horn in his left hand. And is um, yeah, wearing a very beautiful headdress. And he doesn't wear a helmet like Vishnu, but he wears a headdress like a peta. Uh, and uh, yeah, Lord Krishna's very beautiful lotus feet. So all of this have to automatically come. And then the Lord stands on the wall of the lotus of the heart of the devotee. Preman Janachurita Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadaiva Rudayeshu Vilokayanti Yam Shama Sundaram Achintya Guna Swarupa Achintya Guna Swarupa It's Achintya Inconceivable beauty of the Lord And that form has to appear in the lotus of the heart or the eye of the mind whatever it is it just we have to just we should be able to remember it that's all Smayamanam abhidhyayet tanuraga valokanam niyate naika bhutena manasavara darshabham. The Lord is always smiling, always. We can drag this always, always smiling. And devotees should constantly they see the form, see the Lord in this form as he looks very mercifully toward the devotee. Just see, so nice. Uh, he's never displeased with the devotee. He's always smiling. Uh, he's looking He's uh, looking mercifully at the devotee. Just imagine. Uh, so we should think of, we should think about the form of Krishna which is looking at us. And the form, Krishna is looking at us. Mercifully. And he's always smiling. Very pleasing, peaceful, quiet, calm personality. Of course, Krishna is Krishna has other qualities out there. This peaceful, calm, quiet can be more attributed to Vishnu. Uh, Krishna and Vrindavan is very different. 
so which is why whatever form we want to focus on we should have heard from authorities it is not some mental speculator's imagination so we should read about the authentic qualities form of krishna through shastra and then yeah based on whatever rasa uh, we get attracted to so when we are, when we read when we continuously continuously you know read krishna book mm. repeatedly read krishna book mm. or shrimad bhagavatam is 10th canto if we have finished the first nine cantos and we finish bhagavatam once then we can repeatedly read the 10th canto also right then there will be some mm, form of the lord which attracts us some types of past times of the lord which attracts us mm. and then we are expected to go deeper into that form into mm, those leelas deeper mm, deeper means um, maybe we will be we will keep reading only one leela And then we might read acharya's commentaries on that leela a few leelas like that so we are expected to go deep into this understanding of the real understanding of the lord his beautiful form past times based on the rasa that we are attracted to and so if somebody is hears the childhood past times of krishna and become attracted by krishna in that childhood form balya Uh, then yeah then they can go deeper into that they can uh, understand the beautiful form of the lord as described by various devotees in that uh, that form of the lord in that age etc etc similarly you know sakya vatsalya madhurya and our dhyana has to come automatically with kirtanam with japa as we do shavanam kirtanam we have to naturally enter into jnana of krishna in krishna's form past times paraphernalia everything in this way the meditator should look toward the supreme person who got it the bestower of all benedictions always remember any time if we are sad or disheartened always remember this krishna is always looking at us smiling and mercifully he looks at us very mercifully and is always smiling any time we have any kind of trouble our mind is troubling us or there's a real situation of difficulty we can simply remember that krishna is looking at me mercifully and is smiling at me in fact his smile sometimes i i i feel this is my speculation sometimes i feel when i look at krishna's smiling face it's so much smiling it almost looks like like artificial as in we can't even imagine can somebody just keep smiling like this all the time isn't it artificial no it's the real feeling krishna is always happy to look at his devotees he's always ready to be merciful towards them that is why it is inconceivable because uh, whatever we can understand the qualities of this material world can't apply to krishna no yeah of course everything is coming from krishna but the actual uh, the real description of krishna as he is um, kind of becomes counter intuitive to us can somebody be always smiling the word niyatena is very significant in this connection for it indicates that one should execute the meditational practice as stated above one should not manufacture a way, a way of meditation on the supreme person of god but should follow the author shastras and personalities and this is what i said so we have to read 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 only then we know what is the author is form by this prescribed method one can practice concentration upon the lord until one is so fixed that he remains in trance that he just doesn't want to budge move his attention away from the beautiful form of the lord that he is seeing so that is why we say it's not imagining a form it's seeing the form so seeing the form through the description through shravanam and this is samadhi 
one becomes so much attracted by the beautiful form of krishna that he feels it's futile to just divert the attention to anything else uh, and uh, the heart of the devotee is so pleased so happy just looking at the beautiful form of krishna that he doesn't want to doesn't want to divert he says no don't want i have to go to work no i don't want to think about it i just want to think about krishna it's okay you know it'll be fortunate if somebody can come to that state and we don't have to be afraid of it oh how is that if i always in trance what will happen i'm thinking always of the form of the lord don't have to worry and not all of us will get there anyway so the few ones who can get there are really 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 fortunate the lord the word used here is eka bhutena which means with great attention and concentration if one concentrates on the description of the body features of the lord one will never fall down look at this powerful statement one will never fall down what is the meaning of fall down meaning coming down from our spiritual practice from our standard of spiritual practice uh, whatever say suppose we are chanting 16 rounds and then we come down from 16 to 15 Uh, even one day is a fall down so prabhupad is saying if one concentrates on the descriptions of the bodily features so basically these bodily features these descriptions if we can concentrate on them we will never come down in our spiritual practice uh, many devotees uh, ask this question the simple solution or uh, the secret sauce is constant shravanam you know the more we hear about krishna the more we remain fixed in his devotion hmm. and for us we should also understand saying that actually uh, vishnu's form is described in more detail uh, in krishna in uh, bhagavatam but krishna's form is not much described krishna for us to actually go into the depth of krishna's form or more details of course there is different there are differences and for to understand those details we have to enter into our acharyas writings of our acharyas mm, you know mm, yeah i also tend canto going more deeper hearing other commentaries from our acharyas now after we have done our prabhupad after we have read prabhupad sufficiently and we are fixed on the we are very clear about prabhupad's philosophy or oh, by the way so when i talk about prabhupad's philosophy i was hearing that somebody is saying that like uh, of course there used to be a debate uh, but i heard that in uh, known in our circle of known devotees uh, somebody is uh, teaching saying that we are not going back home back to godhead we are going to back going to godhead for the first time this is a complete deviation from prabhupad Mm. so what do devotees do unfortunately these things have to be checked mm. if they are they are noticed they have to be checked uh what we do is we use our limited brain power to think about oh, okay krishna is saying once we go back mm, punar janma nahi we are not going to come back mm. that means then if we were already there then how did we come back or how did we fall and then using just this one shloka then we will say no 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 then it can't be that i fallen that means that i am not gone there at all that means i am going now first time hmm no but proper clearly said going back home back to god uh, and there's a book also original position hmm. anyway so the point is if proper is saying something we should just understand that i'm i have such a tiny brain i cannot understand these things hmm my tiny brain and logic i should not use try to use my brain power logic and then conclude that propad is wrong or say something against propad of course we will never never i mean any persons any sane person will never openly say okay i don't agree with propad but they will speak in a way that they don't agree with propad meaning they will go against propad what propad is given us hmm. that's blasphemy and that's offending propad right um so we have to be very very careful so when do we go enter into uh, acharya's books 
after we are thoroughly fixed in Prabhupada's teachings, thoroughly fixed, that we know exactly what Prabhupada is saying, we know what does what Prabhupada say? Prabhupada's whole process or his foundation of his books are basically pure devotional service, complete surrender to Krishna, sticking to parampara, basically. This is what it is. Uh, right, uh, of course, and he just uh, smashes impersonalism, so personal feature of the Lord. Mm, so these things we have to know and we should stick to those. Of course, there's so many other things and we have to read, 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 read. After three, four times maybe, then we can start thinking about Acharya's books. Mm -hmm. But it is required, it is required because otherwise we can't enter into our sampradaya only we cannot enter because our sampradaya really, I mean, for us that way, uh, hardcore, right? After understanding that Krishna is the Supreme Person of Godhead, we have to enter into Krishna's aspects of Krishna, Swayam Krishna. Yeah, so I think I'll misbehave. Yeah. One who meditates in this way, concentrating his mind upon the always auspicious form of the Lord, is very soon freed from all material contamination. So, very powerful process. Just concentrating on the beautiful form of the Lord frees us from all material contamination. All our anarthas can go. And it does not come down from meditation upon the Lord. Of course, for us, the process is through chanting. The fixed meditation is called samadhi or trance. A person constantly engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord cannot be deviated from meditating on the form of the Lord, as described herein. And the Archana Marga, or the devotional part described in Pancharatra system of devotion service for worshipping the deity in the temple, makes the devotee think constantly of the Lord, that is Samadhi or trance. So those fortunate souls who are engaged in deity worship, they can think constantly of the Lord. Of course, those who are not also, who are standing outside and feeling you know, not qualified to enter there, can also still see the beautiful form of the Lord and think of it constantly. But yeah, because somebody is doing deity worship all the time, they will have more opportunities to be closer to the Lord and also hence thereby remember the form. One who practices in this way cannot deviate from the service of the Lord and that makes him perfect in the mission of human life. Okay, we'll stop here. Are there any questions, comments? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yeah, Mataji. I'm slightly confused. Prabhuji, like uh, uh, when we say uh, we go back to Godhead, this will be the first time we go back to Godhead. We've never fallen down from there, right? No, we have fallen down. We have we fallen, have fallen down. down. Yeah. So then uh, that that's the jealousy and all that, right? So yeah. you can still, even if you go back, you can still fall down? Yeah, but uh, Bhagavad Gita says that, you know, yad gatva nanivartante tad dhamam paramam mama. So that dhamma to which having gone, you will not come back. So then there is, then, yeah, we use some of these uh, statements and then uh, we start questioning, saying that then why is Prabhupada saying that going back home? We have not, never been home at all. We've always been here only. Mm, right, but so that is why GBC actually released a book called Our Original Position. So you can read that. Mm, uh, yeah, but we should understand whatever Prabhupada has said is true. We cannot maybe understand with our tiny brain, uh, but it's okay. So many things we, have, we we can't understand using our tiny, tiny yes. brain. But we can't go against what Prabhupada has said. If Prabhupada has said going back home, we cannot say going home. It's wrong. Yeah, yeah Prabhupada. And that's it, right? Now, whether we yes. can understand, not understand, it's our problem. Yes, sir, Prabhupada. Right? Prabhupada used to say, yeah, if you, all these things, when you become matured, when you advance in Krishna consciousness, you'll understand all this. Hmm. So some of it is like a KG1 child. He doesn't understand. He's going to repeat like a parrot. Uh, some things we have to just repeat like a parrot. Some things we will realize. And as we make progress, we'll realize some more, uh, many of these things. But before the, reaching the stage of realization, we should not change the philosophy. Yes, sir. Just because we are not able to understand. But Prabhupada is very clear, going back home, back to God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yeah, Shashank Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. Pranam. Uh, no no metro. Last, uh, no metro. No metro. I came. Yeah. Ah. So, 
so last line uh, like uh, it is mentioned like the devotees who work for deity worship they will be more closer to god but we also like we are not doing deity worship but we are doing shavaram kirtanam yeah and seva also so yeah. we can also be we can also be like them only oh, yeah, yeah. like yes 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 so let me explain this so uh, in our vaishnava school so in basically there are there are two paths uh, one is called bhagavata vidhi the other is pancharatri ki vidhi uh, bhagavata vidhi is the process of shravanam kirtanam which is given by prahlad maharaj shravanam kirtanam vishnu right uh, so basically this shravanam kirtanam mm, is the main focus for us um, right that is what chaitanya mahaprabhu taught us now in addition to that there is pancharatri ki why shravanam kirtan is important because hari krishna mahamantra simple right without hari krishna mahamantra there is no question of going back home mm, just by doing deity worship now there are some sampradayas who don't focus on the nama and they focus more on the lord the lord's form deity archana they focus on archana on this puja mm, but that's that's not going to give us perfection the right? perfection is shravanam kirtanam now along with that now some devotees uh, become very much fixed only through shravanam kirtanam they become fixed uh, they like like these things i was saying like, like you read the form you mm-hmm. read about the description of the lord's form and then you become attached attracted to it then you are you know you're thinking about it and that's samadhi as well you know for some who are not readily uh, who don't get hooked on by shravanam kirtanam Mm, they can they by doing pancharatri ki vidhi archanam deity worship they can develop the same attachment to the form of the lord which the bhagavata vidhi person by shravanam only can become attached to the form of the lord and doesn't have to actually physically go and see or be near the lord uh, but this always helps for example you know we are throughout the year we are doing uh, shravanam kirtanam um, and then yeah those even if you are not engaged in dt worship maybe once in a week we go to the temple uh, once in few months we go to uh, mayapur vrindavan and then we become attracted to the forms of the lord right um, which actually then it enhances our shravanam kirtanam uh, so both can uh, i mean both together are also very powerful process but even without dt worship just by shravanam kirtanam we can, we can achieve perfection mm. hari krishna mahamantra is everything right and just if you are doing sincere chanting we will go back we will achieve perfection you don't have to think worry it's so powerful okay bro yeah thanks bro okay anything I else yeah, uh, just to uh, add to this like uh, without shabnam kirtan only doing daily worship does not uh, no no that's not going to give us perfection yeah uh, because hari okay yeah. And Prabhuji, one more thing in uh, verse 50, we read a real yogi, the word from real yogi. So yeah, it yeah, means yeah. Bh- bhakti yogis. Yeah, I mean, in this case, it could be dhongi yogis who are doing imagination. Um, basically, we say now there are so many ashtanga, uh, ashtanga yoga schools of meditation. Uh, they are cheaters because they say uh, meditate on uh, candle. Right? So dhongi, they are not real yogis. Mm, even nama even in ashtanga yoga there is a real yogi also and then of course then there there is a real real yogi who is a bhakta yogi bhakta right and uh, for the bhakta automatically meditation happens so either even an authorized ashtanga yogi can also do uh, authorized meditation on the vishnu form he is also called a real yogi yogi okay prabhu ji and the great sages like vishwamitra mitra vishishth muni like uh, like Vishva Mitra fell down. Shobri Muni. They are also yogis who meditated upon the form of the Lord, na? They are yogis. Ah, uh, see the um to the extent we retain our false ego, to that extent any one who is not a devotee can fall down. So yogis can fall down, right? Because yogis they even achieve siddhi, which is ashta siddhi, right? And then they fall down. so falling down is uh, for a non devotee falling down is part and parcel of the process for a devotee because he is holding on to the lotus feet of krishna then see what does the yogi do yogi will concentrate his mind for some time and after that what will he do he will do something else some mechanical processes right i mean he doesn't have any love for krishna 
he is not surrendered to krishna he is just simply meditating on a form and many yogis also uh, you know they don't think that actually the lord has form mm, so they'll think the form is temporary so then they will end up in going to brahman only so just because we are see the the process here given is uh, meditation with loving devotional service uh, which is the, we, there, there is a process there is a little bit there is a tinge of bhakti uh, for somebody to be actually get, to get attracted to the form if that is not there if there is a mechanical dhyana so one can do mechanical dhyana med mechanical meditation on the form of the lord mechanical just thinking okay this is what shastra is describing these are the words so i am now going to just you know yeah concentrate myself my mind on this but they don't have any feeling any thing any as relationship with the lord uh, then they will possibly they are not surrendered to the lord so they will retain their independence and yeah one menaka will come and gone right uh, but devotees because they there is love there is a relationship there is surrender there is dependence the so krishna might pull us out even when even if we are about to fall down so that thing that says one who concentrates constantly on the form of the lord does not fall down it is with some affection right not mechanical it's not some mechanical process uh, yes prabhu ji got it and prabhu ji one more thing i don't know how to put this question like uh, can we use the terms like for lord vishnu and lord narayana interchangeably no right no we okay. don't because is vishnu difference? is connected with the material world narayana is the boss in vaikuntha narayana doesn't necessarily come he doesn't uh, he is not active in the material world vishnu is not active in vaikuntha in that sense because vishnu mm -hmm. only comes in the as part of the creation vishnu's role is more limited to creation maintenance so technically okay. speaking we can't interchange but because vishnu is also narayana because he coming from narayana we can interchange that way okay and vishnu is used only for the three lords that yes. are coming bodhachri yes. yeah okay and in vikuntha we can't say vishnu is no, there we, should, we, should we say, say lord narayana yeah. yeah okay and the form is same chaturbhuj uh, yeah. both yeah. have changed. yeah but mahavishnu okay. is like a huge form so narayana is not like a huge form He's taken a form which is pleasing and can be seen by the devotees and loved by the devotee. So like that, you know, whatever is suitable in Vaikuntha, Narayana has that form. So he has four arms. That doesn't mean that all the features are similar. Like for example, uh, Chiro Daka Shai Vishnu is entered into the heart, so small form. Mm. So he is big and he is small. Uh, then he lies down on a big snake. You no, know, Narayana in uh, in Vaikuntha has a form which is like I said, conducive. for devotional service by devotees in vaikuntha and so and it's yeah i mean and is he what he does for example is different so he doesn't have to do take care of uh, past times connected with this material world functions are different his functions are different uh, like that so there will be differences okay and when lord krishna went with arjuna they went to see uh, mahavishnu uh, mahavishnu okay. yeah they are in only the similarities yeah. uh, they have four hands both of them yeah yes yeah i mean see every form of like that is why when we come down from krishna everything below is all in krishna right balaram onwards everybody is coming from krishna so all of them are actually present inside krishna right and then he manifests them now when balaram comes out he will not have he he cannot be called as same as krishna because his color is different for example like that as we keep coming down uh, narayana is not same as krishna he has some of the attributes of krishna uh, like that so vishnu also he is not narayana but he has some of the attributes of narayana mm. uh, but he is coming from narayana so like that and when it. krishna appeared in the jail first of all it was narayan form na it was vasudeva vasudeva which is ch the chatur chaturvyuha so from balaram kam chaturvyuha vasudeva sankarshana pradimna niruddha they are also 400 that vasudeva appeared vasudeva yeah thank you so much okay okay anything else okay भागवतम की जय जगत गुरु शिल प्रभात की जय वंश कल पदर व्यस्त कृपा सिंधु बे चपति दाला पाने के विषय
ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರ